In this video, we'll be looking at Chapter 11, Section H on Mutually Exclusive and Non-Mutually Exclusive Events. Let's consider, for an example, drawing at random a card from a normal deck of playing cards, which, which usually has 52 cards. Consider the following possible events. Event X is the card is a heart. Event Y is the card is an ace. And event Z is the card is a 7. Now notice that event X and event Y have a common card, the Ace of Hearts. Also notice that event X and event Z have a common card, the Seven of Hearts. But also notice that event Y and event Z have no common card, for I cannot have an ace and a seven in the same card. This introduces the concept of mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive events. Now the terminology is a little bit cumbersome here, but it's easier to consider the, the mutually exclusive case first. In other words, event Y and event Z they have no common outcome, therefore they exclude or prevent the other, the other outcome from happening. In other words, if I draw an ace, there's no way that I can also draw a seven at the same time. So the ace excludes or prevents the seven from being drawn. And these cases are called mutually exclusive. and sometimes they're called disjoint events. Right, there's no overlap. On the other hand, event X and event Y are non-mutually exclusive, and this is the confusing part. The term, this is where the terminology gets a little cumbersome. Non-mutually exclusive means that they can overlap. In other words, the heart does not prevent an ace from being drawn. Think of it this way. We have fiction, which is, uh, which is a made-up story, right? And we have non-fiction, which is a true story. So if, you, if you're used to using these terms in your English classes, um, just remember that mutually exclusive prevents an event, two events from happening at the same time. Non-mutually exclusive means that they can happen at the same time or that they can be true. Now in both cases, for mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive events, we're usually talking about an or statement. And remember from our previous work that or uh, means that we're going to add possibilities together. In a mutually exclusive event where one event excludes the other from happening or prevents the other from happening, the probability of event A or B happening is simply the probability of A happening plus the probability of B happening. And we'll see this in an example in an upcoming slide. For non-mutually exclusive event, or in a case where two events don't prevent each other from happening, where they can both be an outcome, the probability of A or B occurring is equal, again, to the probability of A plus the probability of B but in this case, we need to subtract the instances where, prob where both events occur at the same time. So the probability of A and B. And again, we can, we'll see this in an example problem and an illustration with a 2D grid shortly. 
Remember from our previous videos, though, that the probability of, of A and B happening, and in this case we're using an AND statement, is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Let's go back to our card example and let's determine the probability of drawing an ace or a seven. And we first need to figure out whether or not these are mutually exclusive events and to do that we can draw a 2D grid. Now this 2D grid represents all the different possibilities, the 52 different possibilities, of randomly drawing a card from a standard deck of cards. We have our numbers, 2 through ace, and we have our suits, spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. Notice that we've circled all the possibilities that will get us a 7 and all the possibilities that will get us an ace. Notice that there is no overlap between these two shaded regions. This tells us that we're dealing with a mutually exclusive set of events. That's because I cannot have an ace or a seven at the same time. To find the probability then we use the the simpler of the or the easier of the two equations so the probability of an ace or a seven is equal to the probability of drawing an ace plus the probability of drawing a seven. Well there are 13 different numbers that we could get from our cards and since we're considering all sevens the probability of drawing a seven is one thirteenth and the probability of drawing an ace is also one thirteenth. So the probability of drawing an ace or a seven is simply two thirteenths. Again, let's consider drawing a single card from a deck. And in this case, we want to find the probability of drawing a heart or a seven. Again, we can represent this scenario with a 2D grid. And in this case, notice how the shaded regions overlap. We have all of the hearts and all of the sevens. This tells us that we have a non-mutually exclusive set of events. In other words, both a heart and a seven could occur at the same time. Now this is the harder of the two uh, probability equations for, for our OR statements here. But it's, not, it's really not that much harder, right? We have the probability of a heart or a seven equals the probability of a heart drawing a heart plus the probability of drawing a seven minus the probability that we have a heart and a seven at the same time. Now we can see that the probability of drawing a heart is one fourth because there are only there are four suits in a deck and we're considering all of the hearts. So the probability of drawing a heart is one fourth. And we know that the probability of drawing a seven is one thirteenth. Now the probability of drawing a heart or a seven, we could we could calculate by multiplying those these two probabilities together or we could just visually inspect the graph and see that there's only one dot where the two shaded regions overlap and that re represents our case where I have both a heart and a seven. So this is one out of 52 possibilities. If we uh, do a little math here and find some common denominators we can simplify this expression. So our common denominator is going to be 52. So I'll have 13 over 52 plus 4 over 52 minus 1 over 52 gets us 16 over 52, which equals 4 
thirteenths. And if you want to check your work, you can count the number of dots that are highlighted in the region. So we should get 16. And if you count the dots, being careful not to count this dot twice, you should get 16.